Hi everyone and welcome to the first in a series of question and answer videos that I'm going to be doing here on YouTube. It's going to be hosted over on satchcast.com so they'll be available for you to watch there as well. In this series what I hope to achieve is that any problems or questions that you might have you can send me an email at dan at satchcast.com or go over to the Facebook page or through the comment section on the videos over on YouTube. I pick all of these things up and believe me I do read them all. Um, I don't always get time to reply to every single one, but hopefully this will be a little outlet for us to um, communicate a little bit more. So I'm going to answer a few questions from both from YouTube and also from the emails that I'm getting today. I've got six of them to answer, so I hope you find this video useful. On we go with it. So the first question we have is from Angelina Wu. She says, hi, after playing for three years, I recently moved from a student model alto sax to an intermediate Selma SAS 280. Great sax to Selmas. I noticed this model is much more difficult to play. I have to put greater strength as I'm blowing or else the notes, especially the lower notes, will be untuned or silent. The quality of its sound is nevertheless much better. Thus the mouthpiece goes only halfway into the neck. I used to have it 75% in with the student model, but I believe the sax is in great condition. Does this mean I need to get used to this saxophone or am I not proficient enough to play an intermediate model? Thanks. Um, hi, Angelia. So, different saxes do have a different feel. Every time you get hold of a saxophone and you play it, it feels different, a different one. It's from alto to alto, in particular with brands. I remember one occasion when I picked up a saxophone of a friend, and bear in mind, I've been playing sax for like 20 years at this point. Picked up a friend's sax, I could get a note out of the thing. I was using my mouthpiece and it was on their saxophone, but it's just something about the way that the sax is put together, the amount of pressure that's in it, the way that the instrument is actually set up, that interferes with kind of how you play and, and the instrument that you play, and the, the particular instrument that you're playing, sorry. So the first thing is that yes, you are going to need to get used to this new instrument because it is going to be different from your old one, absolutely. Now, there's a few other things that you should really be checking, like for example, check that the saxophone is actually set up properly because that makes a big difference. It could be that it's literally just come off the production line and to be honest with you, some saxes when they come out of the um, factory, they are unplayable. A lot of stores actually will set the saxophones up before they sell it to you. So make sure that that sax is actually 100% working and maybe even get a technician or a local teacher to actually try it out for you just to make sure that that sax is actually working. Um, and then, you know, if, you've, if you're still struggling with that, then take it to a technician maybe to get it looked over if you want sort of an independent um, piece of appraisal. Um, the other thing is, check which mouthpiece you're using on your new saxophone. Because actually, the mouthpiece makes a big difference. And even if you've got, even if, um, say, you had a, a, I don't know, a Yamaha 4C that worked on your old saxophone, you might find that this 4C doesn't work on the more professional model saxophones. It just doesn't go. Certain, certain model saxes want a particular type of mouthpiece. Now, the one mouthpiece that I find works almost across the board, with, with the exception of obviously that example that I gave you earlier, is the Selma SATC Star. Now, it's, it's um, quite a versatile mouthpiece. It's not a sort of piece that I'd be playing if I wanted to do lots of jazz and blues and maybe playing in bands, um, but it's probably your first professional level mouthpiece. And I encourage my students to get them actually very early on in their playing to be honest, but just because they're sensational mouthpieces, they do exactly what they should do, they vibrate nicely, they create a nice tone, and if you're putting the right sort of um, strength of air down it, the right embouchure, then it's gonna do really well for you. Um, the other thing is, have you checked which reeds you're using? The reed makes a big difference on certain saxes as well. It could just be that that saxophone is feeling more open, it's got a bit more resistance, so the reeds that you're using may actually be too strong now, that they were, perhaps they were weaker on your old sax, now they're gonna be new ones. Obviously I'm surmising because I don't know your actual setup here, but these are general sort of rules of thumb to check. So the actual positioning, not only the strength of the reed, but actually the position of the reed as well. You can check perhaps the reed position, Sometimes you might find that on this new sax, it's a little bit harder to blow. You find that you're actually getting a lot more resistance there. So why don't you just try 
or tune your reed down a little just so that that reed doesn't have quite so far to vibrate against the mouthpiece and see if that actually helps. Um, just to address your um, issue with the cork, with the uh, mouthpiece going on the neck of the cork, the cork on the crook is when it's produced is actually a set thickness. They just get it from a strip of cork, they cut it down and they glue it onto your crook. Now, that's a default size, literally a default size. Your mouthpiece on the other hand will be a certain size as well and they have different, each mouthpiece has a different sort of chamber size that fits over that cork. So, you might have found on your old size you could push that thing right on, on this one it's right on the end. Well, actually you're going to need to work your mouthpiece onto that crook over time. It will compress. You can also shave it down using a little bit of sandpaper just to get the, the cork on the crook a little thinner and also you could use some cork grease to push that mouthpiece on. Um, you probably are going to need to work the mouthpiece on further onto your crook otherwise it's probably going to sound quite uh, flat. You might want to actually check your tuning with the tuner once you've got it all working and stuff and just make sure that your mouthpiece is on enough. So to fix your cork, get it, shave, shave it down a little, use lots of cork grease if need be. What I actually do if I've got a brand new cork that's way too thick is I'll get my mouthpiece, I'll put it on as far as I can and I'll probably leave it on the mouth. I don't recommend doing this on um, everybody's size. You generally want to take it off to preserve the cork, but I'll actually leave my mouthpiece on the cork itself, just for a little while so it compresses. I'll leave it on for maybe 12 hours or so, just to let that, that um, cork compress, and then you'll find that the mouthpiece will go on a bit further next time. And just do that, repeat that as much as you need to. Don't do it too much though, or you'll ruin the cork, and then the mouthpiece will just fly off and flail off, and you don't want that to happen. Um, a more professional sax, just the part about um, our professional sax is harder to play. Um, Professional saxes shouldn't be much harder to actually play. The actual physical blowing of it and making it a sound, in most cases, shouldn't actually it shouldn't be harder to play. You, you might choose ten saxes and some of them all you'll some you'll agree with some of them more than others, but in general, a professional sax is no harder to play than a beginner sax. The only difference with the beginner sax is they're generally a little bit more lenient when it comes to embouchure, so they, they're not quite as likely prone to squeaking and as prone to overtone movements. So, yes, you could probably squeak more on a professional sax, but the actual, the actual playing of the instrument shouldn't be much harder, it just that's the only downside that you might find you could, you'll squeak a little bit more on a professional sax. So, I hope that that helps you um, Angelina and that you have the best of luck with your new sax. What I would love to do is hear which actual um, mouthpiece and reed you're using because that actually has a big bearing on it. So I hope um, everybody found that useful. Let's move on to the next question.